my name is Becky and I'm a senior psychological wellbeing practitioner and in today's video I am hopefully going to be offering you some tips and guidance on how to secure a senior psychological wellbeing practitioner role. Just as a very quick disclaimer, this video is not going to guarantee that you're going to get the role. I really wish that it would, um, but all I can do is just to offer you the tips and guidance that I have based on my personal experiences. I have achieved this role and I've learnt a lot in the journey towards becoming a senior psychological wellbeing practitioner, so I'd like to share with you the things that I've learnt that will hopefully allow you to secure the role as well. Hopefully this advice will allow you to become readily equipped to apply for the role and also to interview for it. For the purpose of this video I am going to refer to the job role as senior PWP just because the actual job title is quite a bit of a mouthful. So just for a little bit of context, I am a senior PWP and I have been for six months. Prior to that I was a qualified PWP for two years and then obviously prior to that I was a trainee PWP for a year. If you would like to know how to become a trainee PWP then I do have a video on my channel that I've already filmed and uploaded um, that offers you the tips and guidance on how to become a trainee um, based on my experiences in securing that role. I will leave the link to that video in the description box. So I'm going to treat this video as though you already are a qualified PWP or a trainee or an equivalent mental health professional as that is required in order to become a senior PWP. So let's get into it. So let's bring it right back to basics and start off with what actually is a senior PWP. So a senior PWP typically works in an NHS talking therapy service which was previously known as IAPT. And the aim of these services is to offer quick, short-term therapy using the least intrusive resources but the most appropriate treatment options for clients. And the goal is to increase accessibility into mental health services. In order to provide these effective but least intrusive treatments, the service will have a stepped care model. So a PWP and a senior PWP will typically work at the step two level, which is tailored for clients with mild to moderate mental health difficulties, such as anxiety and depression. And the treatment they tend to provide is guided self-help based on the principles of cognitive behavioral therapy. So if you are a PWP, then you will already be aware of the high caseload demands and how you would be expected to offer a mixture of assessments and treatments for clients. So a senior PWP will typically have a reduced caseload because they will have more managerial responsibilities instead. So the senior role is a good hybrid between clinical work and managerial work as well. So you are still reinforcing your skills as a PWP, but you are also maybe taking on some line management tasks or some data audit tasks or those things that kind of fit within the managerial remit. So the next part is, how do I start looking for a senior role? So unlike a trainee PWP role, which tends to come up at certain times of the year depending on when the courses at the university start, a senior PWP role can be advertised at any time of year. However, what I've found is that there tends to be a pattern where there will be more job openings for a senior role around the time that the high intensity trainee courses start. And I think that the reason for that is because quite a few senior PWPs in services then progress on to being a trainee high intensity therapist, which means that their role is then open. So if you are struggling to find any job openings for senior PWPs, I would highly encourage you to have a look around the time, maybe like a couple of months or so, before the trainee high intensity therapist courses start. But like I say, this is not a specific time frame. Senior PWP roles can be advertised at any point of the year. It's just dependent on what the service needs. You tend to find the most senior PWP jobs on the NHS jobs website or indeed there's a lot of them that are advertised through the NHS. However, there are also private companies as well. So you don't just need to stick to the NHS in order to secure this role. There are quite a few private companies that also hire PWPs and senior PWPs as well. 
So, how do I know when I am ready to apply for a senior PWP role? Firstly, do you have the appropriate experience? So, normally and more often than not, a senior PWP position will require you to have at least two years experience as a qualified PWP. Now, don't get me wrong, I have seen some services where they will offer only one year, so you only need to have been qualified for a year, but that has been quite rare and more often than not you will find that you need to have two years PWP experience or the equivalent mental health professional in order to be a senior PWP. You will also normally have the supervisor training. So for example, I was trained as a supervisor when I was just a qualified PWP and that helped me to secure my senior PWP role because it's highly desirable and actually probably essential as a senior PWP is to supervise. Don't worry though if you don't have the supervisor training, Again, I have seen some services which will automatically put you on the training if you are successful in being hired as a senior. However, that again is quite rare and they do prefer for you to have the supervisor training before you apply for the senior role. If you have any other trainings or specialisms, that will also be helpful. It won't be required, but it will be very desirable and it will strengthen your application. So for example, when I applied for my senior role, I also had the LTC training, which is the long-term conditions training. And that just helped to see how I can work with a client group that has diverse requirements, how I can adapt treatment and tailor the treatment to that specific client. However, there are also roles like being a champion in your service. So if you are a perinatal champion, for example, or the men's mental health champion or advocate, um, then those things will be really, really helpful to strengthen your application when applying for a senior role. So alongside being a PWP, if you have any other clinical experience from previous roles or the past that you think are relevant, um, then that would be great as well to bring into an application for a senior PWP role or anything that you feel like has transferable skills as well. And if you also have any experience to do with line management, team lead roles, or if you have any experience in data audit, that would be highly recommended to include that in your application for a senior PWP because those duties and responsibilities will come into a senior role. So that is how you will tell when you are ready for a senior PWP is if you tick the majority of those boxes that I've just mentioned but also if you just feel ready for the next step, if you feel ready to progress. So what do I include in my application for a senior psychological wellbeing practitioner position? Obviously I cannot tell you exactly what to include or what to write and it will vary depending on the service that you are applying to. Your best friend will be the person specification or the job description. That will have essentially a checklist of exactly what that service is looking for and you can use that to tailor your application to it. Draw on your previous experience and the transferable skills that you have from those experiences and also discuss your time as a PWP. Discuss the stepped care model, discuss the purpose of NHS talking therapies and what the goal behind those services are and discuss why it is important that the treatments that we do are based on evidence from NICE guidelines. You could also mention skills that you've learned from your undergraduate degrees or your postgraduate degrees, providing that they are relevant. So the next step is preparing for interview. Now, some of these points I'm about to mention, you can also provide in your personal statement in the application stage and then build on these in the interview. So I suppose what I'm about to discuss is relevant for both application and interview. There are a few themes I'm going to focus on in particular as I feel like it's important to incorporate elements from each of these themes. So those themes are research, clinical, managerial and personal. I personally feel like if you can incorporate elements from each of these themes then that will provide a really strong interview and application for a senior PWP position in my opinion and experience. 
So the first theme that I mentioned is research. By this, like I mentioned earlier, I mean research NHS talking therapies, services and the stepped care model and low intensity treatments. Why was IAPT set up in the first place? What is it trying to achieve? How does it achieve its goals of improving access to psychological therapies? Research the stepped care model. Why is it important to use the most appropriate but least intrusive treatment option? How does that benefit the client and the service? And where does the PWP fit into that model? Don't just show an awareness of step two, which is what you will be trained in. Display some knowledge from the other areas as well because it is important to know when a client is suitable for a step three treatment, for example. What are the difference between the steps? You need to know that as a qualified PWP and especially as a senior. Research the basic principles of cognitive behavioural therapy, which ideally you should know anyway if you have done the PWP training. Research the NICE guidelines and why it is important that the treatments are based on evidence from these guidelines. So that is the research side of things and to be honest you will probably already know the majority of that if you are a PWP and maybe just brush up a little bit. The next theme that I'm going to mention is clinical. Again, if you are already a PWP, you will have a clinical experience, which puts you a step ahead in order to be able to achieve a senior role. So the key here is how you sell yourself. How do you use all of this experience that you have? How do you use that to your strengths in an interview? What do you choose to talk about? So you could discuss how you have effectively delivered a step two treatment based on NICE guidelines to a client that has allowed their questionnaire MDS scores to enter what's classed as recovery. You could choose to discuss an example of delivering an assessment to a client that presented with quite a complex presentation and how you were able to determine the most appropriate treatment option for them or how you liaised with other healthcare professionals and had more like a multidisciplinary meeting regarding the appropriate treatment for that client. Part of the senior role will include liaising with other mental health care professionals on appropriate care plans. So if you've got a very specific example where you have done that, that would be highly recommended to pop into your application and interview. If you have the LTC training, then I would highly recommend that you discuss that within your interview as well and come handy with an example. So for instance, you can display how you have adapted treatment for a client with a diverse need or with a specific diagnosis. If you don't have the LTC training, you could also use an example of a diverse need and how you have adapted treatment for them instead. So for example, if there is somebody who came through to the service where there is a language barrier in place, how did you make sure that that client was still just as able to access mental health treatment as anybody else who can speak the common English language? Now, one thing that would be extremely, I would say essential, to be honest, to discuss in an interview if it comes up is supervisor training. A large part of the senior PWP role will be supervising PWPs and providing case management and clinical skills supervision. So if you are a PWP that already has the supervisor training, come handy with an example of how you have utilised supervision, did you identify a rupture in supervision and how did you overcome it? What have you learned from the PWP in supervision and also how have you used your knowledge to encourage the PWP to learn? I have had quite a few senior PWP interviews. I've not been successful on every single one, obviously, but they have all had a question about supervision. Another thing that has always, always come up in an interview, not just for the senior role, but for PWP roles as well, is risk have a example of a risk case prepared before you come into interview. How did you manage risk appropriately? What did you do? 
How did you gather the appropriate information? What was the appropriate course of action? Who else did you liaise with and communicate this to? Who else did you contact at the time? How did you explore risk even further? How did you gather information on the frequency, the intensity, the plans, the preparations, the access to means? Did you create a risk management plan or a safety plan? How did you identify the client's protective factors? Again, if you are a PWP, you will know how to ask about risk. So I would encourage you to have an example prepared before your interview um, in terms of risk because it is more than likely that you are gonna get a question about it. So the next theme is managerial. I suppose we've already touched upon this a little bit in the clinical side, kind of went off on a tangent there, but one of the key managerial responsibilities of a senior is supervision. However, alongside that, you could also discuss a little bit more around the data audit side of things, so looking at recovery statistics. So for example, there might be a question that comes up where one of your supervised EPWPs has not reached the service target of 50% recovery for three consecutive months. What do you do? How would you handle this? What is the appropriate course of action? You could also discuss how you are supporting supervised staff in order to maintain appropriate clinical records in line with the services operational policy and this helps to maintain the outcome data as well. So you could discuss why it's important for good record keeping, for clinical documentation, and how you can use supervision to support staff in managing that as well. You could also discuss how clinical skills supervision is really helpful to um, enhance the quality of clinical practice and encourages transformational learning. And again, if you have any experience in providing one-to-ones, any line management experience, this would be great to pop into the interview as well if there is a question relevant on it basically. And then the final theme is personal. Why do you want the role? What do you hope to gain and nurture from it? How are you going to contribute to the service further by achieving this role? How will you be a good fit? How are you going to cope with the stress and workload demands of the role? How are you going to support your supervisee PWPs in managing their high caseloads and hitting the service KPIs? How do your values align with the services and the NHS as well? Are you adaptive to the fast-paced nature of a talking therapy service? And you can also pop a little bit of reflection in there as well as part of being, I mean, anybody in psychology really, people love reflection. If you're able to self-reflect on your clinical practice and show what you need to develop, what your strengths are already, what you wish to continue learning, then you're one step ahead there. The ability to self-reflect is one that should not be overlooked. It is a really valuable skill in psychology and would be useful to pop into a senior PWP application and interview. And then for the final part of this video, I just wanted to discuss some things to be mindful of or look out for that may not always come up in an interview, but they have come up a few times when I've interviewed, so it just might be helpful to be aware of these. So some of your interviews may require you to do a role play or to assess a vignette or they might ask you to do a presentation. So those things, just be cautious of them because they may surprisingly ask you to do those in the interview. For example, I've been asked to do a role play and I've also been given a vignette in a different interview that asked me to spend a couple of minutes reading through it and then discuss what the next steps are or what I would do. I suppose with anything like risk, assessing a client, gathering further information, even supervision, one of the most helpful tools that you can use is to use the four W's. So that is just what, where, when, and with whom. If you can have it in your mind to just make sure you ask those questions, then you are in the process of gathering further information. And normally there is always a question that asks to gather further information in some capacity. It's a very great but simple information gathering tool. They may also ask how you will use that information. So just not how you're gonna gather the information, but what you're gonna do with it when you've got it. So they might ask how you bring that forward in case consultations, MDT meet meetings. So that is pretty much everything that I have to offer in terms of tips and guidance 
on how to secure a senior PWP position. I really hope this has been helpful for you. I'm aware that that was a lot of information. I feel like I talked really fast and applying for these positions can be very overwhelming. So don't be too disheartened if that is how you currently feel. If you do have any further questions or anything you would like me to discuss in a bit more detail, or if there was just something that I didn't mention in this video that you would like to know, please leave a comment below. I will absolutely answer it for you. I know that getting a senior PWP role can be tricky. It can be competitive and everybody's experience is different. But I hope that this was helpful for you nonetheless. Like I mentioned, I'm just coming at it from a very honest perspective based on my own experiences of achieving this position. I also have a video on how to become a trainee PWP if you are interested in that and also how to pass your OSCE as a trainee. All of these videos will be linked in the description box and are on my channel as well. I wish you the best of luck in whatever it is that you choose to do. If you enjoyed this video please make sure to give it a thumbs up to let me know that you did and don't hesitate to leave a comment below if you have any feedback on this video or any further questions. If you like my content and you want to see more from me, please subscribe because it's free and it just lets you know every time I upload a video. Thank you so much for watching this, I hope you found it helpful. I will see you next time, or rather you'll see me, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye for now!